Okay, this lecture is going to cover the digestive system, structure, and function. Okay, so some of the major functions of your digestive system um, is to turn the food that you eat into usable energy, energy that your body can use to perform other functions. Um, also kind of packs the residue, the leftover things, energy and nutrients that your body doesn't need or use, um, pack it together nicely for waste removal. Um, solid waste removal specifically and then also to intake water liquids right most of the time when we think of digestive system we're simply thinking of solid foods but it's also through your digestive system where your body gets all the water and other liquids it needs to remain properly hydrated okay so there are major structures in your digestive system uh, of course it starts with your mouth right that's where food or liquids that you're going to ingest um, enter into the system Right, in terms of food, your teeth help to break down the food and um, start that process off, making it into more manageable sized portions to be broken apart further into nutrients and things. From your mouth, um, the food or liquid enters into something called the esophagus. This is near your windpipe or your trachea, trachea excuse me, but it runs behind it. Um, the food will move through here through a process called peristalsis. And what that is is circular contractions, right? of smooth muscle to push things down. So I hope you remember that from when we talked about the muscular system. Um, from the esophagus it enters into your stomach and this is a hollow organ, right? Empty except for when you put food in it. And it mixes the food up with enzymes and digestive juices and things like that to further break the food down into usable forms. Right, after the stomach um, the ingested food or liquids go into the small intestine. Now there are three segments to the small intestine, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Now the duodenum just continues the process of breaking down food, um, very, fairly similar to how the stomach does it, um, but it uses enzymes that are excreted by the pancreas and bile that's created by the liver to help with this breakdown process. Um, the ileum and jejunum are the further along parts of your small intestine and those really, their big function is to absorb up all the nutrients that have been broken down by the stomach and the small intestine, or the, excuse me, the duodenum of the small intestine, and get all those nutrients into the bloodstream so they can be carried throughout the body to where they need to go. Um, the small intestine in its entirety uses the process of peristalsis to continue to move the food and wastes and everything through the system. Now because with the small intestine we mentioned the um, function of both the pancreas and the liver, I wanted to go ahead and mention those and talk a little bit more about each of them as well as the gallbladder. Now the pancreas is located right near your small intestine and it, it again secretes digestive enzymes that are released into the small intestine, specifically into the duodenum that continues to break down food into manageable nutrients. Um, it also produces insulin. So when you hear about diabetes and people who have to take insulin shots because they are diabetic, it's because their pancreas is not properly functioning to make the production of insulin. Now the liver is a really large organ. It's kind of located next to your stomach. Um, and it again releases bile into the duodenum or in the small intestine um, and it processes some of the nu nutrients that are absorbed from within the small intestine. It's also involved in detoxification of the body and that's why people who for instance are alcoholics tend to have issues with their liver because it's overworking. It's constantly trying to detoxify the body from that alcohol. Now your gallbladder is located directly underneath your liver and it stores and secretes the bile. So the bile that the liver is producing, it's storing it in the gallbladder and being released from there into the small intestines to continue to break down fats and things like that as needed. All right, now from the small intestine, um, the digesting food, at this point really it's mostly wastes, continues on into the large intestine. Um, your colon is technically considered part of your large intestine. Again, it continues to process the food and pull out any last minute nutrients that or you know things that it's going to need from within the food and then really its big function is to prepare it 
as a waste product to be removed from your body, right? How do you think the stool moves throughout the large intestine? Through the process of peristalsis at this point, it should be pretty obvious that most of these things use that. Um, and it's just kind of interesting. It takes about 36 hours for stool to get completely through your colon, so completely through this large intestine process. Now, I'll put this up there because it's kind of an interesting fact, but stool, solid waste, right, is mostly food debris and what else? I'm hoping all you guys thought bacteria because that's true. You have tons of bacteria, beneficial bacteria that are located within your intestines that help this food breakdown process and everything. But of course, as food, like a big chunk of food waste is getting moved through there, it's going to pick up some of the bacteria along the way. And um, it's going to leave your body with the rest of the stool. Um, also, after the large intestine, it goes into the rectum, right? And that's where whole stool is sort of held until you're ready your body's ready to excrete it and then your anus is the last part of this digestive tract and it is the external opening right it's where stool actually exits from your body or solid waste actually exit from your body now a structure that I haven't been mentioning along the way is are called sphincters right and these are muscles that are located around a tube for instance something like your esophagus your stomach your small intestine your large intestine all these things are sort of tubular in shape um, and they open and close to selectively let things through or keep things out so think about where along your digestive tract these might be Hopefully you're guessing that they're along some of the major intersections of these organs that we were just mentioning. For instance, there is a sphincter that's located between your esophagus and your stomach. right? And now, of course, you want food to go from your esophagus to stomach. So it's not necessarily to keep food from going through from your esophagus into your stomach, but it does want to prevent food from coming back up, right? Because that can be problematic. Um, now, not to say that it doesn't happen sometimes. I'm guessing that most people have probably thrown up at some point or known someone who has. And of course, that's that to to throw up stuff from your stomach. That sphincter has to open to allow things to go back up through the esophagus. But we all know how uncomfortable that feels, and it's not something that, that's good for your body. It's not something that should be happening on a normal everyday basis, right? That can become problematic. And so the purpose of that sphincter is really to keep things from coming back up and out from going the other way in your di digestive tract. And of course they're located all along between the stomach and the small intestine, the small intestine, the large intestine, the large intestine and the rectum. Right, it continues on like that. And so you can kind of think to yourself whether or not they're there to selectively choose when to allow things to go through or to keep things out depending on the functions that are happening in that area or at that intersection of organs.